Dave Holder. To my right is my co-host, Mr. Norman Graham. Welcome to Honest Rock Productions, a talk show where the topics are designed to be provocative and the exchange is intense. What we've created here is a platform intended to explore, stimulate, agitate, and even expose the thing or two. To get you as close to the truth as possible, we ask the questions that you want answered. So let's get to it. Today's guest is a pillar of the community. His not-for-profit organization, Love Yourself, remains steady in its commitment to putting a halt to the violence which has a stranglehold on urban communities all across America. With his tenacity, this former New York City Corrections Officer and NYPD Police Officer, and now Councilman of the 35th District, is well on his way to bringing attention to this ongoing plight in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, Councilman James E. Davis. Councilman. Hey, thanks, Dave. So let's get right to it. Councilman Davis, you made a statement earlier about the fathers. On the spot, takes is, a production is taking an issue on fathers' rights. There's, in the city, state, and local agencies, federal government, there's a lot of issues out here. And we definitely want to get your opinion on where you stand. Because there's a lot of fathers that's making a decent amount of money, 40, 50, 60,000. And now they're coming home with $30, $30 a check. Where do you stand on that issue, and can we get some sort of... We stand, we stand with any man who wants to step to the plate and be accountable and responsible for the baby that he has produced. But on the same token, we understand that there are men who must be dragged, hunted, pulled into the courtroom to step to the plate and hold down their, accountability, uh, their responsibilities. So, again, we stand up for the fathers. There's a couple of brothers over in, at Mega Evans College. There's a couple of men who have a father program in place. Uh, I think you're going to be interviewing them soon. They are in the forefront standing up for and making sure that fathers. young fathers are responsible. Okay, okay, but now we have responsible fathers. You said you're standing up for them. Right? Mm -hmm. What does that really translate into in terms of practical terms of our viewers can understand because I mean everyone understands well I'm standing up so okay but what are you doing after you stand up? Well when certain individuals reach out to us we will go to we go that extra mile whatever that mile means if that mile means to go to court with them right. if that mile means to intercede in a, uh, 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 in helping them find a job. Does that uh, translate into changing legislation? The oh, okay. legislation uh, is currently working against them. Well, it depends on whether the legislation is coming from the city standpoint or the, whether it's state legislation or it's federal, federal legislation. As a city councilman, we deal with the city councilman. Uh, this it. is the question I'm going to ask you. As I said, there's a lot of gentlemen that do want to be fathers, but they can't support their own self because they get caught up in situations where they're paying rears. What I'm asking from you is can we get some sort of reform where we can at least get the basic rights where fathers can come in there like motor vehicle and get a list of what, are the, what is their rights when they walk in there. Can we're asking you personally, can you put in some sort of legislation for reform to at least to let the fathers get their rights? If they have some sort of rights where they know that this is a checklist, like you go to motor vehicle, you know your ticket will be thrown out. If I, you I think I think what you're suggesting is more than reasonable. Okay. I think because of the key word is if, and uh, if uh, I think that's more than reasonable. But on the same token, I'm not one of these individuals who will uh, uh, gently uh, justify men making babies and not using protection. I'm not one of these cats who just says, oh, you, you've done some great honor. I was a correction officer in C95, and I would see cats locked up behind the bar, so I'm they got six kids from six different women. I understand. But they was in that jail cell, they was in that jail cell, and they wasn't around to raise those six I kids. Understand. From six, as though being but a father. what about that correction officer? Now, what about that correction officer? Wait a second. As though being a father was some great badge of honor. Any boy can come, but a father <laughs> will stay what about, and raise What about that correction? officer might have two different women from two different women and, 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 he, and he bring home a check for twenty six dollars but he do want to be a father from, from two different women or from three happens, different women but he do want to be a father so, is, is but he, so he can't he, support his he has got family. to understand he has got to understand before going in you're a grown man you have responsibility I know that if I, if I make a woman pregnant I understand seventeen percent I understand, but next, you got to be accountable and held but, accountable. But, but, I, think that's what, I think that's what Norman's saying, because we've got, just like you said, we've got 
many prison men all around, walking down the street, whatever, six kids, six different women, were currently... Professional a basketball players, right. a badge of honor, seven kids, we're, ten oh, kids we're, all we're over the place. We're not giving it a badge of honor. We're not giving it a badge of honor. Ten kids all over the place. We're not giving it a badge of honor. We right just now, want to be able to support right now, the family. That's all. Right, right now, if you go into a uh, Planned Parenthood clinic, there's more information on how to not get, to tell a young man how to protect yourself so you don't get a woman pregnant, than there is to tell you how to if you cross that line, this is what you're going to be responsible for. Now, to me, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. True, but where's his father? Well, well, uh, not, where's, the, not, where, where's the daddies? Where are you? Where is, where is no, where, where my, where is we, we have to be on that corner educating our young people. We can't just continue to depend on this racist uh, a system who has clearly shown that they don't have love for our community. When are we as a community, we got enough money generating our community to take our boys back on what, that street. What, about education? Education? Right. what about education in the school? Right. What, what about education? Oh, what, about education? Right. What, about education? what about education in the home? What about education on the street corner? What about education on the street corner? What about education by us as a community going on those street corners? We allow black men who look just like you and I to sell drugs on our street corner. We will march against police brutality and not march against black on black crime. We will we will cry and boo who wait a second. We will cry and boo who at a black person's funeral who has been killed by a racist cop and we will not show up for a black woman's child who's been killed by another person with a nigger mentality in our community. So, so how do you rectify this? I mean, we, we, everything you just said, we all agree with you 100%. We all know we've seen it from the time we've come up. But that's been the status quo. What is the instrument of change? The instrument of change is when we, you and I, and what y'all are doing here, On The Spot Productions, this wonderful program, standing up, being role models, getting out there, and taking it to the street corners where they are, and educating, not being afraid, not crossing on the other side of the street, sending a message to them drug dealers that happen to look like us, you cannot date my daughter, you cannot date my child, you cannot live in my neighborhood and violate my community. Okay. We're not going okay. to allow, we're not going to speak out okay. against police speak, brutality speak, when I march against black on black crime, crime, which there is no such thing as black on black crime. It's really niggas on black crime because black people don't commit crime against black people. Black people love black people, but it's a mentality, a nigga mentality that is, is prevalent in our community and we got to speak out against it. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Honest Park Productions. We're still here with Councilman James E. Davis. We have one question left. Norman? Councilman Davis, how can we implement Black Enterprise Magazine into the school curriculum to motivate the children to see positive role models of what blacks are really doing? Well, I think that's very, there's all kind of ways, but again, uh, what makes Black Enterprise Magazine better than Ebony Magazine? I mean, this is a, another, uh, because they are sponsors of this particular show, because they're supporters of you, because they have a message that would generate young people towards uh, uh, financial education. Why can't we teach the stock market in this class? But I have no problem with Black Enterprise Magazine being in school. But the question is, is how is Black Enterprise Magazine going to benefit our children? Having control of the the community, the school boards, having parents that uh, associations, they used to be called parent T PTA, parent teacher association, okay, parent okay. associations that's involved heavily in those schools, having a say at what principals and who's going to be teaching our kids is the way we get Black Enterprise Magazine and any other magazine in our school. We have got to be at the table, but we cannot depend on elected officials. We are all, in a sense, uh, elected officials. We have all got to come to the table, monitor the process, show up. You know, that's the one thing that used to sad me. If And whenever I, and you, uh, uh, Norman, a retired correction officer, and me, former correction officer, and Brother David, it used to outrage me to see so many parents come to visit their kids, and not only right Island, but upstate New York, if they would spend the same time visiting their kids during the Parent Teachers Association meeting, spend the same time visiting their kids and talking to the kids' teachers, then they won't and do it, put that time in going over that kid's homework, then they won't have to visit that kid later on when he's in jail and blame the whole system. It's time for accountability. I would support Black okay. Enterprise Magazine being in the school, and I support with Norman and David on the spot productions. What you brothers are doing is what it's all about. One day I'm going to be mayor of the city of New York and be a role model for every one of those 
those children, but it's going to take responsibility, accountability. No longer do we play the blame game. We don't put the finger at the white man no more. It's time to point the finger at what can we do to raise ourselves up. Up, you mighty race. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can block us. You, on the spot production, the best show in town, on the spot production. I'm Councilman James Davis. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. On the spot. On the spot. Thank you, Thank you for joining us on the spot. And look forward to seeing you next time when you get to see our uh, next guest reacts when we put them on the spot. On the spot! <laughs> <laughs> on the spot. <laughs>